Avi, uh, black holes have uh, captured the attention of even the general public in terms of uh, what they seem to be, this uh, very strange place where uh, time, space, matter, everything, everything sort of uh, collapses into a, a singularity. Um, and I'd like to understand the importance of black holes from really two perspectives. One is in universal structure, because what seems to be is that in at least galaxies that we know, in every galaxy, I don't know about everyone, but black holes seem to be a central part of the universal structure. Um, and then black holes as this sort of test bed for fundamental physics. So black holes are extreme structures of space-time they are the ultimate prison. You can check in, but you yeah. can never check out. And in principle, we can uh, construct a black hole in our backyard. Uh, all you need to do is fill the orbit of Jupiter with water. And then you'll get a billion solar mass black hole. <laughs> the problem is there is not enough water in the Milky Way galaxy <laughs> to fill this volume. <laughs> but that's one simple prescription of making a black hole. We do find that at the centers of galaxies, black holes are naturally made. And they range from a million solar masses, like in the Milky Way, uh, all the way up to billions of solar masses in the most massive galaxies. Um, and those black holes have a big influence on their host galaxies because even though they represent a small fraction of the total mass of a galaxy, mm. they release huge amounts of energy. So they are very efficient factories for converting rest mass into radiation. And by doing so, they impact their environment dramatically. They heat up the gas in the galaxy, they suppress or uh, ignite star formation. Um, and they have a, a very big influence on their surroundings. This is one channel of making black holes. Another channel is through the collapse of stars. Yeah. Uh, very massive stars uh, above uh, several tenths of the mass of the sun end up their life in a collapse uh, without a bounce. The envelope of the star ends up at the center and it makes a black hole. Yeah. Uh, and most recently, the LIGO Observatory discovered gravitational waves Amazing. which are ripples in space and time generated when two black holes come together. Uh, you basically get a storm of space-time and the ripples propagate out just like waves on the surface of a pond and they reach us from the edge of the universe and the LIGO Observatory was able to detect these very subtle ripples uh, that uh, only 10 years ago we were able to uh, predict reliably using computer simulations. Mm. Um, so these waves were almost at the distance of the nearest star to us when humanity was able to solve Einstein's equations a hundred years after Einstein came up with, with these equations. And as the waves were about to reach yeah. us, we were able to forecast what they might look like. And then the LIGO Observatory became sensitive enough the minute it opened its ears to the sky uh, in the first few weeks it yeah, detected those signals really remarkable really one of the one of the great and so now it's not only that we detected gravitational waves which are the messengers uh, it's also the message that is being carried by these waves and the message is that black holes exist and they look just like Einstein's theory of gravity predicted. In fact, it was Carl Schwarzschild, a few months after Einstein wrote down his equations, that came up with the solution of a black hole. It's called the Schwarzschild solution uh, that shows that a point mass has a region around it from where even light cannot escape. Mm -hmm. And that's called the Schwarzschild radius. Mm -hmm. And it defines the special property of a black hole. There is this horizon inside of which we can't really see what's going on. And it, in a way, it protects us from the singularity at the middle of that region, which is a place where Einstein's equations break down. We know why they break down, because the theory is not complete. It doesn't have quantum mechanics. But we are protected from that singularity because of the horizon. 
So just to get a perspective on black holes, we know that the next most dense thing is, is a neutron star. And if we had a, a, te a, a teaspoon of neutron star stuff, it would be more massive than... An the, asteroid. Yeah, an, an asteroid or major mountains. So in comparison to, to that, what, what, what is the so-called density? But you can't talk about density of a black hole because it's a singularity. Yeah, but you can ask uh, how much more do you need to compress the neutron star before it becomes okay. a black hole? Anyway. And it's actually, uh, you just need to reduce the size of the neutron star by a factor of five or so. Okay. So a neutron star is what, like 10 kilometers yes. or something like that? You need to reduce it to about a few kilometers. Okay, and uh, then it would... Two or three. Uh, and then it would become... And then it would become a black hole. Okay, okay, very um, good. So in terms of galactic structure, you, in, in each case, it, it, what's the chicken and egg? I mean, did the galaxy create the black hole or did the black hole create the galaxy? Or is it a co-terminus thing? Um, currently, it looks like uh, black hole formation is an integral uh, component of, of galaxy formation. So in other words, when you assemble the matter that builds up a galaxy, some small fraction of the matter gets all the way to the center, sinks to the bottom of the gravitational potential well of the galaxy, uh -huh. and makes a black hole. And as the gas falls into that black hole, it rubs against itself, heats up, and shines very brightly. Mm. And we see those very bright sources, they are called quasars. quasars. Um, and so we, feel, we believe that the quasar formation is an integral part of galaxy formation. It happens when a galaxy is assembled through mergers of smaller galaxies. Mm -hmm. So galaxies are made of building blocks that come together as, as a function of cosmic time. And, and black holes are a critical part of that. You couldn't have the galactic formations that we have in the universe today without black holes. Is that That's fair? right. Bra black holes are very important constituents of the universe. Uh, so much so that um, the research on black holes occupies the minds of many, many astronomers. And um, we actually established recently uh, the only center worldwide that focuses on the study of black holes. It, it's called the Black Hole Initiative at Harvard University that brings together astronomers, physicists, mathematicians, and philosophers to discuss <laughs> these very peculiar structures of space-time. And the public is fascinated by black holes.